dear students welcome back in this session now we are going to discuss about the constant direct current the constant direct current which is um, also sometimes known as constant galvanism which is if you see the graph it is an unidirectional current of unvarying intensity okay so if you see the faraday current um, as well as in galvanic current also we have a uh, some those two also direct current but they are interrupted uh, direct currents isn't it so now here we are going to discuss about the constant direct current so first we'll see the physiological effects of um, this constant direct current normally the tissues of the body are conductors of electricity because the tissue fluids contain ions and um, so they are called as electrolytes consequently the current which passes through the body is a convection current consisting of a two way migration of ions so the same thing we have also discussed in the antiphoresis isn't it yes the conductivity of the different tissues varies according to the amount of fluid that they contain um, and also the muscle with a good blood supply being a good conductor while fat is a poor conductor the epidermis has a high resistance about 1000 ohms as it contains a little fluid and the superficial layers do not readily absorb moisture the resistance of the underlying tissues is much less than that of the skin so the current spread considerably once it has passed through the skin and the current density and therefore the effects are much greater in the superficial than in the deep tissues the physiological effects of the constant um, direct current are due to the two way migration of ions and may be divided into two groups one is um, um those obtained throughout the interpolar pathway effects in the interpolar pathway and next one is and the effects which are produced at the poles that is called as polar effects so polar effects consists of um, uh, four types of effect, effects one is electrotonus electrophoresis introduction of ions into the tissues and the chemical effects if you see the methods of application it consists of two types of uh, methods one is cathodal galvanism and anodal galvanism and it also having uh, some sort of therapeutic effects also for this constant direct current now first we are going to discuss about the physiological effects so that is e effect in the interpolar pathway that means uh, for example uh, this is a tissue and which is uh, supplied by cathode and anode okay so the way in between the po two poles so what are the effects which are taking place um, in the interpolar pathway okay so these effects are produced throughout the pathway of the current but are more or most marked in the superficial tissues where the current density is greatest so mainly it mainly seen in the superficial tissue that to where the current density is greatest okay so the movement of ions causes alteration in the concentration of substances in the tissue fluids so the movement of current which changes the concentration of the substances in the tissue fluids already this tissue fluids consists of some ions so this causes um because of the flow of current the ion starts moving because of this moving ions will change the concentration of the tissue fluids and this is taught to 
accelerate the interchange of materials between the cells and the tissue fluids and to increase cell metabolism this is due to cell metabolism increase in cell metabolism and also another thing uh, uh, we can observe in this uh, effects in the interpolar pathway one is the erythema of the skin which is observed when the pads or removed after treatment indicates that the current causes vasodilatation that means at this part so once if, if we remove this electrodes you can find some redness uh, below this electrodes this is due to vasodilatation um this is undoubtedly takes place in the superficial tissues and it has been assumed to occur in the underlying tissues as well although there is no definite proof uh, for this for underlying tissues uh, is going to happen and they have proposed several theories to cause uh, for the vasodilatation it may be due to the moving ions stimulating the sensory nerve endings and so cause reflex dilatation of the blood vessels this is one one theory and uh, irritation of the cells may cause liberation of the h substance this produces the triple response of dilatation of the capillaries by a direct effect dilatation of the arterioles by the axon reflex and local edema due to increased permeability of the capillary walls all these three together called as triple response this triple response due to this triple response also vasodilatation is going to take place and then the vasodilatation may be the result of the mechanical action of moving ions bombarding the walls of the blood vessels so this is the another way um, they have explained uh, why this vasodilatation is causing at the electrodes okay now we will move on to the polar effects these are the effects produced in the tissues immediately under the electrodes and differ at the anode and cathode so in the polar effects the effects which are produced immediately below the tissues for example this is the skin in the below the skin what is going to happening and the effects are different uh, uh, from cathode to anode so the effects which are causing at the cathode is different and the effects uh, which are causing at anode are different okay so there are four types of uh, polar effects we can see one is the electrotonus electrophoresis introduction of ions into the tissues and also the chemical effects now we will see one by one the first one is the electrotonus yes here we will see the electrotonus electrotonus is the effect of the conductivity and excitability of the nerves okay so here uh, the nerve the nerve fiber is stimulated um, through a source this one is a uh, cathode and anode and um, this stimulation of the nerve which causes contraction of the uh, muscle so once directly if uh, the nerve is stimulated it shows uh, the effect of conductivity as well as the excitability of the nerves normally this can be demonstrated in the laboratory with the gastrocnemius muscle and the sciatic nerve of the frog okay electrical stimulation of the nerve produces muscle contraction but if at the same time at constant dc when constant dc is applied with one electrode between the point of stimulation and the muscle point of stimulation and the muscle the strength of contraction is modified okay if the anode applied if uh, if the anode is applied the strength of contraction is reduced 
anode is applied the strength of contraction which is going to reduced okay this shows that the uh, the anode has the effect of decreasing the conductivity of the nerve the cathode has the opposite effect of increasing the conductivity of the nerve and so the strength of the muscle contraction okay so here the electrotonus uh is decreased electrotonus is decreased excitability and conductivity of the nerve in the region of anode okay and um, electrotonus which is going to uh, increase the excitability and the conductivity of the nerve in the region of cathode okay so for that uh, the terms they have given here is called as um, an electrotonus and cat electrotonus so an electrotonus is the decreased excitability and conductivity of the nerve at the region of anode and cat electrotonus is the increased excitability and conductivity of the nerve in the region of cathode okay so both are so both uh, these two or these two effects are due to the development of the potential difference across the plasma membranes of the axons of the nerve uh, in which the current passes the potential difference developed under the anode under the anode augments the normal resting potential difference and so makes it more difficult for an impulse to pass while under the uh, cathode which reduces the resting potential difference and increases the conductivity okay so <clears throat> while these effects can be demonstrated in the laboratory um sometimes it is doubtful whether they can occur in the living body as um, increase in the potential difference so one side of axon is accompanied by a reduction of that on the other side isn't it so one side is reduction and one side is um, excitation isn't it so at the same time clinical evid um evidence indicates that the effect is produced to some extent there is no other explanation of the relief of pain that follows treatment with um, anodal galvanism and further evidence is provided by the greater erythema produced at the cathode than at the anode this effect is probably occurs because the excitability of the nerves is increased at the cathode and reduced at the anode so there is a greater reflex vasodilatation at the cathode than at the anode so this is about the electrotonus if you see the electrophoresis when a current is passed through a non living semi solid electrolyte such as gelatin here we can here we can see the um, agarose gel okay there is an increase in fluid at the cathode so if you see so this is at the normal um, gel which is connected to the uh, cathode and anode and here is the power supply and this one is the cathode if you observe here so after um, uh, giving power supply what happens there is an increase in the fluid at the cathode increase in the fluid at the cathode and decrease in the anode so the increase in the fluid at the cathode is known as cataphoresis and decrease in the fluid in the anode is called as anaphoresis okay normally various explanations uh, have explained this electrophoresis that um, it is uh, due to the movement of positively charged colloidal particles so gel is nothing but colloidal particles which are present in the electrolyte and to which uh, water molecules adhere 
so when a potential difference is applied to the colloid particles which are considerably larger than the ions migrate slowly away from the anode and towards the cathode carrying the water molecules with them and bringing about the redistribution of the fluid in the living tissues the continual circulation of fluids must to a large extent counteract this effect but there appears to be some reduction in the fluid present in the superficial tissues underlying the anode and an increase of fluid in the at the cathode so this is about the electrophoresis so this is the point we have to consider here after uh, all seeing this explanation so that means um fluid is going to decrease at anode and um, fluid is going to increase in at the cathode introduction of ions into the tissues which is nothing but ionization we have already discussed this ionization in detail in the previous session that means when the constant dc is passed through the body there is a two way migration of the ions isn't it positive ions and negative ions moves in two ways okay of ions in the tissues and also in the solution contained in the pads okay so mainly this is uh, occur due to the uh, ions positive ions which are repelled by the anode and um, negative ions which are repelled by the cathode okay so this is about the ionization if you see the chemical effects when a direct current is passed through an electrolyte chemical changes takes place at the electrodes if the current is applied to the body with metal electrodes keep it in mind with metal electrodes in direct contact with the tissues the tissues are involved in chemical actions and are destroyed so there is a coagulation of the tissues at the anode so in the case of chemical effects at the anode there may be the coagulation of the tissues coagulation of the tissues at the anode while at the cathode uh, they tend to liquefy so very very important thing so if you apply if the current is applied to the body with metal electrodes in direct contact with the tissues the tissues are involved in the chemical actions and are destroyed there is a coagulation of tissues at the anode while at the cathode they tend to liquefy when pads are used uh, uh, the chemicals are formed between the pad and electrode okay but uh, should the pad be of insufficient thickness the acid is formed at anode okay um, acid is formed at the anode and um, the alkali is formed at the cathode the same thing we have discussed in the ionization that that same chemical effect is going to take place here because there also we have used the uh, constant direct current so the chemical effects are also same as that of uh, what we have uh, discussed in the ionization okay yes so the chemical effects um which are uh, the chemicals which are formed at the electrodes uh, which uh, leads to um, damage to the skin and the destruction of the tissues okay the chemical effects are utilized in the treatment known as surgical ionization but are also responsible for the burns which are liable to occur with direct current treatments if you see the therapeutic effects okay if you see the therapeutic effects uh, of constant direct current so the increased blood supply so therapeutic effects increases blood supply which uh, makes more oxygen and food stuffs available to the tissues and the removal of waste products is accelerated these effects help to bring about the resolution of chronic inflammation and are utilized in such conditions as osteoarthritis chronic rheumatoid arthritis stiff joints following injuries 
टेनिस एल्बो एंड टीनोसाइनोवाइटिस ओके the anode and cathode lie fairly close together so the effects which are different under the two poles tend to contract each other the increase in blood supply is however more marked under the cathode than under the anode and there is a counter irritant effect at the cathode the moving ions irritate the superficial sensory nerve endings which have been rendered more excitable by cat electrotonus and the marked stimulation of these nerves appears to reduce the impulses reaching the brain from the underlying structures pain due to lesions of the deeper structures is relieved and the method is found to be particularly effective in the treatment of chronic lesions so when the constant dc is applied for the conditions uh, which we have uh, mention which i have mentioned earlier the cathode is usually placed over the more painful aspect of the part okay so the effects of constant dc are uh, primarily on the superficial tissues so the treatment of is of most value for lesions of superficial structures such as the wrist knee and ankle joint being much more less less effective for deep structures like the hip joint the constant dc alone is rarely an adequate treatment so this one uh, we can use rarely uh, an adequate treatment okay because um, uh, it this uh, for this constant direct current there may be more chances of burns okay so the methods of application if you can see one is cathodal galvanism and anodal galvanism when if you see in the cathodal galvanism when the cathodal effects are particularly required the cathode is applied over the affected structure and the circuit is completed with a much larger anode elsewhere on the body okay so the active pad may be large covering as much as the affected structure as is possible or when the lesion is localized a small pad may be used if you see in the anodal galvanism when the anodal effects are particularly required the anode is applied over the area to be treated and the circuit completed with larger cathode elsewhere on the body so these are the two methods of applications so this is all about the constant direct current thank you